Hello. Okay, so I'm going to tell you about zone one, which is the front of our land on this road, road track, hardly any cars go down it. And what I've done here is plant 20 shrubs on this side so that hopefully we end up with a, a bit of a free flowing hedge. So we've got everything from over in the corner there, we start off with a Spartium juncium, which apparently smells delicious. Then we've got an Eliagnus ebinger gilt edge, which is the two-tone one. Then we've got a Filiria angustifolia. We've got a Eremophilia nivea. We've got a Cistus ladinaphus. Um, these are all dry plants. The Cistus, in fact, if you plant some of the Cistus in the summer, sorry, if you water them, they die. So that's how much they don't like water in, in peak summer. Then we've got a Leucophyllum langmanii which has got lovely little blue purple flowers. Then we've got a Myrtus microphilia. We've got a, can't read my own writing here. Oh, Vitex agnus something alba. This one here, which looks a bit straggly at the moment. They have been through several iterations of planting because I didn't do it right the first time with the watering basins. So some of them might have got a little bit badly affected to start with, but we sorted it out. Um, and you can see now they've all got a ring around them. This here is an Arium oleander called Tito Poggi. That grows to be quite big, so the reason that's set a bit further back is because of the size. Then we've got a Juniperus oxydedrus, which is like an upright needle, um, and that's there, and that's quite prickly. We've got a Burpleum fruticosum next to it, and we've got an Abelius something Gautier, sorry, Edward Gautier, that's the one. Atriplex halimus next to that one. Then we've got a Medico arborea. Then we've got another cistus, which is more of a, a ground cover cistus. So these are all different shapes and sizes, these shrubs. But the whole idea is that they'll give a variety of color, diversity of foliage, um, and they'll hopefully attract pollinators in different ways and different pollinators for each bush. Um, in fact that one's already got um, something on it there even though it's not in flower. Then we've got a Toicrium fruticans which is like a long straggly thing at the moment. Um, an Arbutus, una sorry, Arbutus unado strawberry tree here and they, they've got a lovely little red pom-pom fruits on them apparently. Never seen one, in, uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. We've got a Genista monosperma, which is that sort of spider web looking plant there. Hard to see in this light, but um, the smell on that, I think it's a version of the broom plant, and it's white, that one, and it's absolutely delicious. Um, then we've got an, another Eliagnus, Eliagnus ebinjae compacta here. And then just to finish off, the 20th plant here is a Cistus purpurea. Um, so now, why have you cut down all the trees? Yeah, the, the tree, it looks a bit of a mess at the moment. It looks like Thor's been along with his giant ax. But what Pete's been doing after we've harvested the olives on these trees is that Pete has gone up on his high ladder with his motor Sega chainsaw and he's brought down the branches, the huge branches that ha were xylella infected. So um, not, we do actually have to bring the level down by about six meters on each tree anyway, but we've decided that we'll do it after each olive harvest um, is done on each tree so that we can get rid of the infected branches and hopefully give the trees a better chance of survival as we go into next year. But we haven't uh, been able to clear away the branches yet. So that's why it looks like a, a scene of destruction um, across the front of the land, interspersed with the new fruit trees. So now we're on the other side of the driveway. So those 20 are in and uh, all that will happen on that side, in addition to those shrubs, is that we'll put, so I'll scatter seeds along in March and we'll get lots of wildflowers and we're gonna put some tank traps in front of them as well with some rockery plants. But this side isn't finished yet on the shrub planting. So uh, we've got seven all together, or is it eight? Eight all together, um, two of which came from the UK. So uh, you can see the Calistellum on, a silignus, which is the very lime-coloured 
slightly taller tree there, shrub there, and behind it is a cottonous grace. Um, which they both came from the UK because I couldn't find anywhere in Italy that sourced them. Um, but the rest of them came from Capitanio's Vivai Capitanio up near Monopoly and um, we bought back 160 plants the other week from Vivai Capitanio that I had ordered in the van and the trailer and it was really sort of laden down but well packed by the guys at Capitanio. So what we've got here then is a, uh, this is a Juniperus Phoenicia, Phoenicia, uh, which will grow a couple of, it will grow taller than it will wide. So I think it's two to three meters tall um, and only one meter diameter. So that could go quite close to the edge. Then next to that, we've got an Abelia grandiflora, which um, is struggling at the moment. I've just noticed that it toppled over in the winds yesterday, so I must keep an eye on that one. Um, but that smells gorgeous, and apparently the butterflies love it. Next to that, we've got an Anthillus Ber Barba Jarvis next here. And the last one, which you can see the green shoots on it, the bright green shoots on it already um, over the other foliage, that is what's grown since we got it, which is incredible. So that really likes it where it is. Um, it's becoming established. Um, I won't take you all the way down, but there's a gap for a couple more, which is just as well, because in, in the dispatch that arrived from Olivier Philippi's nursery in southern France, I've got a, budli a budlier and I've got a couple of other shrubs that, that can go in. So between the myrtle here, and the Calistellon, I'll probably fit in two or three more. And then on the other side of the Cottonus Grace, I'll probably get four or five. So um, I've got all of those lined up, ready to go in. Right at the end, the last one is a Burt Plurium Fruticosum. And in, inside from that, the little green one, is a Myrcene Africana. So it will look lovely when, it's, when, when they're all established and growing. using zapper, our motor zapper. Oh, it looks a bit stuck. Oh dear. Oh, it looks like it's getting deep. <laughs> but it looks a little bit, oh, 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 it's a bit cloddy here. So it might, might be a bit dodgy. Oh, big rock, see how it coats with that. Yeah, off we go. Trying to do zone one. <laughs> it's a bit, I think the ground is probably a bit wet, but, um, we're doing our best to try and clear of weeds. It's sad. I can plant bulbs and um, yeah, and then I think this is probably the last time we'll motor zap this section because hopefully the plants will take over. We hope you enjoyed the episode on YouTube and do follow us. It'd be great if you joined us on our journey at Lobola. I think you can hit a notification button somewhere if you want to be notified about future episodes or even better, you can be a subscriber and then you automatically get to hear about when we issue a new episode every three weeks.